Hi everyone, today I'm working on a customer order for my duck and frog pond nails. Here's how they look under natural light and also artificial light. I love how the chrome shines under the waves. I'll be showing you how I do the water effect and how I sculpt 3D nails. So step one, I've already picked out my customer sizes and prepped the nails. Now I'm just going to take an alcohol wipe and wipe them clean. For all of my press-on nails, you can always choose what shape and length you want. This customer wanted the same shape and length that I did in my original design, which is short round. Once they're all clean, I'm going to apply a base gel. Here the base gel and now they are all prepped and we can move on to the base color which is Jinbi watering collection in blue this is a collection full of tinted jelly colors because they are translucent they are perfect for water nails or pond nails or ocean nails I want to keep the color of the blue relatively light so I'm only going to apply one coat for all of these nails and because I'm only doing one coat, I'm taking my time to make sure it's nice and even. The polish itself also levels out pretty nicely, so you don't have to worry too much about streaks. They will kind of resolve themselves. Now you can see all five nails have been painted with just one coat. It's nice and even, and I'm going to cure this in my lap. Now that the base color is done, we're going to move on to doing the water effect on the thumb and ring fingers. First, I'm going to put down some top coat on my palette and leave this aside. And then I'm going to use a syrupy milky white and apply it all over the nail. If you don't have a milky white polish, you can also use some white polish mixed with some clear gel. Next, I'm going to use my brush to pick up some of the clear gel from earlier and just drop it into the center of the nail. I'm just lightly tapping these little droplets onto the nail. I like to start from the center and work my way towards the edges. You will notice that the clear gel expands and starts to push the milky polish away. And this is what creates the water effect. These water effect nails have been trending a lot lately but they've actually been around for a really, really long time. I actually learned this technique around five or six years ago when I was playing with resin art. And the technique is actually exactly the same, but instead of gel polish, you're using resin. Just for fun, this is actually a little ring holder that I made for myself five years ago. It is a clamshell holding an ocean on top of a cloud. Once you're happy with the effect, you can cure it under your lamp. If you don't like it, you can always wipe it away and try again. If the white water effect lines are too faint, you can mix in more white polish to make it more defined. Now that I'm done with the water nails, I'm going to move on to the next step, which is to paint all of the 2D nail art. First of all here, I'm going to paint my index nail, which has a couple of daisies. This is how I paint daisies with a liner brush. I just paint out five lines and then I start to round them out into petal shapes. And of course, you can always use a ball tool instead. I feel like that's the more common way to paint daisies, but sometimes I think my hand and eye coordination is just not it and this was one of those nights. So I'm going to hand paint all of my daisies. Ta-da! And once we're done, I'm going to set this aside before I paint the center. While I still have white polish on my brush, I'm going to paint the little duck on the middle nail. The idea behind this design is the little duck is looking into the pond and looking at his reflection in the water. I'm 
also going to give him two little pieces of hair to make him look a little fluffier. And then I'm going to add his eyes. And then now I'm going back to the daisies with my orangey color. This is going to be the same color as the beak for the duck. I wanted something to match between the daisies and the ducks and so I thought using the same color for the centers is perfect. I love this little expressionless duck so much. And now I'm going to move on to paint the frog. Start by outlining his shape. He's going to have two little indents at the top of his head. And then I'm using a flat brush to fill up the rest. I really love how opaque and smooth the screen polish is. Just one thin layer is all that you need. And I don't show it here, but I almost always cure the eyes first before I draw on the little mouth. Just in case I make a mistake, I can wipe it away without ruining his eyes. Add some sparkles to his eyes and then some blush because this is the happy frog. And to match with the frog nails, I'm going to use light pink as the center for these daisies. And now our 2D nail art for the set is done. I'm going to use a no wipe top coat and top coat all of these nails in preparation for adding chrome powder later. And now we're on to step three. The hardest part of the set is the sculpting. I'm using a 3D clay gel by Yogo called Milk Jam. It is already a slightly translucent white in color. This is perfect for my duck nails. I don't have to mix any colors in. It's already the perfect shade. It also doesn't stick to my fingers, so I can easily just roll a ball and then attach it to the nail. So this duck is actually not very easy to shape, and that's because his body is kind of shaped like a bowling pin. The head is browned, but then it dips down for the neck and then has to curve back up and outwards for the rest of his body. So first, I'm kind of just working on making that bowling pin kind of shape and pushing more of the sculpture gel towards the back. Usually any kind of harsh lines that you poke in with the tool will slowly start to round itself out a bit so you don't have to worry too much about that. Maybe it's more like a snowman shape but now I'm going to pinch the top to start kind of forming the tail. So here is a side view of how I pinched up the tail there. And I'm pretty happy with the shape, so I'm going to cure this. And now the lighting has changed because it is the next morning. And now I'm working on the little duck that sits at the edge of the nail with his little legs dangling off the side. This one's just a triangular blob and then pinch the back to form his tail. And while that is curing, I'm going to pick up some more milk jam and mix in some orange color for his beak and little duck legs. And I'm trying my best not to touch any of the gel here by mixing it with my spatula instead until it's not kind of wet and sticky anymore.
Now that it's less sticky, I'm gonna use my spatula and just gently roll out the clay. And now I'm just gonna pick up a little piece of the clay gel and then these will be his legs. And for the bottom of his feet, I'm just making a little triangle on my finger and then pressing it onto the nail. And then I'm going to use my silicone tool just to kind of poke into the bottom of the feet to make it look more like webbed feet instead of just a triangle. And now I'm doing the same thing for the other duck where his legs are dangling off the edge of the nail. And don't forget to also give them a little beak. And some fluffy hair at the top as well. For this little sitting duck, I'm also going to add some round pieces as his wings. This just makes them a little chubbier and fluffier. Ta-da! Here's our little lazy ducks. Aren't they so cute? I love them so much. And now we're going to work on the little happy frogs. I'm going to clean off my glass palette first. It wipes off really easily with just some alcohol. I'm going to use milk jam again for the green frog. I find that because this clay gel is already white in color, it mixes into the colors I need really well. Versus if I use a clear gel, sometimes it's a bit too translucent and I need to use more gel to color it into the opacity that I need. So I'm going to use my spatula again to help me mix up the gel. Now that it's all mixed, I'm going to split out some of the gel and leave some for the ring fingernail and also a smaller piece for the hands. The rest of this will be for the big frog on the thumbnail. He's going to have one big bump at the top of his head and then a little indent at the bottom for his feet. Once you're happy with it, you can cure it under your lap. And now I'm just going to attach a little flower charm in the center. And I wanted the flower to be more pink, so I'm just gonna paint it in.
And now we're going to add his little arms using two small oval shapes. And then make sure you take the time to blend his arms back into the main body. So the big frog is done and now we're going to move on to the smaller one. This little froggy is kind of just swimming and holding on to a flower. I'm starting with a teardrop shape and this will be his little body. I'm going to do a little indent for his little bum. And then I'm going to add a round oval piece at the front for his head. I forgot to film the next part, but he also has two little hands that go beside the flower. And now I'm going to paint in all the details, like the eyes. And we can't forget the blush and eyelashes. And the tiniest little smile. And now our happy frog is done. And now that the hardest part is complete, we're going to top coat all of the nails that we just sculpted. And at this point, I realized that I had forgotten to give my ducks eyes. Okay, now that all the nails have a no wipe top coat, we're going to move on to the final step of making the chrome waves. I'm using some blue chrome powder and I'm just going to buff this over all the nails. You can use a glove like me to just rub it on directly. Or you could use a silicone tool if you like. Or a little sponge applicator like this one. If you don't like the 3D waves, this is actually super cute as well with just the chrome on top. To make the 3D waves, we're going to use a no wipe overlay gel. I love that it is no wipe so I don't have to top coat a second time later. So use a brush to pick up some of the gel and then we're just going to draw on all the little waves. This thick gel does tend to spread just a little bit um, if you wait a bit longer. So if you're really happy with the look of a particular wave that you just painted on, you can always cure it first under the lamp. For the middle nails, we're going to do a swirly effect, as if a big raindrop has just dropped into the center and the waves are rippling outwards. And then for the pinky nails, I'm going to do a little water droplet effect. So I'm covering the smaller daisy completely. If you wanted this to be more cartoony, you could do perfect circles. But I wanted this to look a bit more like real droplets, so they're more irregular in shape. Once you're happy with your waves and they've cured under the lamp, just wipe off all of the excess chrome powder on the rest of the nails. I only wanted the chrome powder to be under where the waves are because I feel like this really emphasizes the waves more. And now the nails are complete and they're ready to be packaged and shipped off to my customer. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to chat with me in the comments and let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you guys next time.